Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I have my first of five videos in my 2020 in review kind of week or project where I'm going to be going over first my top 50 singles of the year, which is this video right now, my top 10 worst projects of the year, so albums and EPs, stuff that just was not great. And then on Wednesday will be my uh, top 50 Monster Cat songs of the year, individual Monster Cat songs, and then top 15 EPs of the year and top 20 albums of the year ending on Friday. Um, but first off, one rule about this video, I debated it for a long time, uh, but it is no repeat artists on a any song here. So these 50 songs will be from 50 different artists or group of artists or whatever. Um, I just decided to add a lot more variety to it. And if there was just one album, which was very, very good, it could kind of take over 10 of the 50 spots. So 20% of the video, I'm just talking and raving about one specific project. So I think it was best uh, to do one artist per spot. And uh, let's get into it. Number 50 is More by KDA, Allison Beer, and G Idol. And I was shocked that this song, that I fell as hard as I did for this track, it's a K-pop banger, and it just shows that League of Legends can do a lot better than just ruin your life. Number 49 is Lemater's Eyes Wide Open, and it is an ode to a friend that had passed, a good friend of theirs, Johannes Grave Muscat, and kind of takes this side and the aspect of loneliness from the people that can help, and how it kind of feels like to be able to help, but realize that you didn't at the time. It's a pretty sad track lyrically, and juxtaposed by these really nice bright sounds. 48 is Margarita by Cloud Nun and Direct. And for two pretty down-tempo artists, this project has a ton of energy to it. Number 47 is Matt Zoe's Love Songs. And it feels like a classic old 2000s EDM banger. That is perfect. It's a great club pick-me-up track. Uh, just a great one, an old vintage kind of feel to it of a track. Number 46 is Oliver Tree's I'm Gone. It is the final chapter in the Ugly is Beautiful LP and is a culmination of five years of Oliver Tree just being frustrated with the music industry. And this is his ode and his final goodbye to ever making music again, apparently. Number 45 is Memba's remix of Alenium's Gorgeous. This track does a great job and specifically remix of taking the original kind of atmosphere to the track and adding their own unique one while both making it sound like it's a part of both discographies simultaneously. It sounds like it could be an Alenium track, but it also very much sounds like a Memba track. And this is actually the only technical remix on my list. Number 44 is Smiles Found a Reason. I didn't love this project when it first came out, but over time it really, really grew on me and I felt like I just come, kept coming back to it. I didn't overplay it and I just pretty much fell in love with this track. And I love that they use their vocals for the first time on their entire discography on this track. Number 43 is Mern's Forbidden Lovers. And this song could easily be a anthem to Romeo Juliet and just the idea of what's being portrayed narratively. And uh, paired with Mern's lower kind of vocal range, it does a great mix to the track. Number 42 is Disclosure's Energy. And energy is the perfect way to describe the song. It just ramps and ramps and builds and goes crazy over the entire runtime of the track coming into this giant culmination of musical sounds that I just love. It is a killer club banger. Number 41 is Dua Lipa's Break My Heart. And Dua Lipa had an outstanding 2020. That's all on the backs of this track in particular. I love specifically the pre-chorus part where they kind of take everything out and just use her vocals and the bass line to mimic it and do the whole pre-chorus until the, everything comes in at the same point. It is just a sexy song. Number 40 is the triple team up of Ford, Sun, and Hans. The three of them create an incredible atmospheric down-tempo chill track that you can tell all of them really added their own unique flares and elements to the song. Number 39 is Lainey's I Still Talk to Jesus. And Lainey kind of forgoes their classic relational drama kind of talk lyrical content that they often dive into for actually some good substance for what they're trying to convey narratively. In a conversation with both the listener and God, they're just kind of expressing their feelings towards faith and religion and the struggles that comes with trying to believe. Number 38 is Galamadius's Let Go. And oh man, I've been playing the song on repeat a ton as of late. I just refound it again. And he has this super distinct, mysterious vibe to all of his tracks that I absolutely love. And in classic Galamadius fashion, he comes in right at the very end with some nice stuttered piano and strings. And oh, it's just a great track. Number 37 is Roman Silver's Friends. And while the non-drop sections are okay at best, the drop, holy guacamole, this thing is absolutely insane. 
I love uh, like deeper experimental bass house sounds and this track is perfectly that. Oh my gosh, I fell in love with the song as soon as that drop hit. Number 36 is What a World by Lewis the Child with Bob Moses. And I think this is one of the only tracks on this list to reside in the minor key and it really pays off for where the track is trying to go both narratively and sonically. It's got this dark atmosphere to it that kind of makes you question about what a world we live in and all the bad kind of crappy parts about living on Earth right now. Number 35 is Mako's Chameleon, and this is the perfect example of a track that doesn't do a lot lyrically. They pretty much say the same lyrics over and over again, but it's all everything else that's around it sonically that just adds so much intensity and layers to everything, where the track would be pretty boring without the huge production elements that come in, but man, this song really takes off. Number 34 is The Weeknd's Too Late, and this is one of the very first tracks where I really had to hone in on which song I wanted from the artist because The Weeknd's album was fantastic. And uh, I ultimately landed on Too Late for its ability to kind of set the precedence for the entire project and kind of add this unique flair to everything that you know what Abel's going for and you know the whole project, what it's gonna be like right after the first and second songs here. And the percussion throughout this entire track is so good. Number 33 is Inverness's Toxic. And this song was my 2020 mindless banger anthem, whatever you wanna say. I just love it. The gu distorted guitar sound is so gritty and so fun to listen to, and Amelia Moore kills it on vocals. Number 32 is Cascade Solid Ground, and I did not expect finishing 2020 to be loving progressive house again. It got super dull and boring for me, but Cascade coming back and coming back to Monster Cat with this track, oh, I just freaking loved it so much. The vocals are crisp and clean, and those deep bass hits at the second half of the drops are so good. Number 31 is Tame Impala's On Track. And again, this is one that I had a lot of time to stir and figure out what I wanted to pick for this album. And I ultimately landed on On Track because of its minimalistic kind of pre-chorus section that's got like one or two synths in it, the little hi-hat and the signature Tame Impala vocal performance. I just like this track more than anything else in the project. Number 30 is Bob Moses's The Blame. And Bob Moses has this very distinct signature style and this track, The Blame, is all of those elements combined. They have this kind of cowboy western kind of synth sound and these raindrop synth sounds, if they'll make sense if you go and listen to it, uh, mixed with tons of other, like the persistent kit that happens all throughout the track. I just love it. Low monotone vocals as well. Something about it just mixes so well. Up at number 29 is Miso and Memories by Just a Gent and Zavi. And if there was any track on this list that's more underground, super not popular, it would be this track. It's really not known that well and these artists aren't super big, but I love it. Their two styles blend together perfectly. And I think the drops are fantastic. They do one heavy hitting one and then a more driven one after and they go back and forth. Great track, go listen to it. And at number 28 is the most popular track on this list. It is Exile featuring Bon Iver by Taylor Swift. And I'm not a huge Taylor Swift fan, but this song does hit differently. I think I love that Bon Iver starts the track off with his verse and then goes into the chorus as he's the only vocal in the chorus. It's almost like this anticipation for when Taylor's gonna come in and sing her part. I just love the track and the atmosphere of everything produced here. Number 27 is Drew Lou's Treasure Map. And you'll find that a lot of songs on this list follow the same sort of blueprint or pattern. And that is a really slow intro into a build that's still happening over a decent amount of time and then a big kind of grand finale. And this song is practically that. Once that percussion kicks in halfway through, I am hooked on this track. Number 26 is Kaizen and Essinger with Neo Soul. And I didn't really know who Kaizen was before this single dropped. And it sounded like something made from someone that has had a lot of musical experience. And so I'm super impressed that this is his first kind of breakthrough hit. And paired with Essinger's screaming vocals, I just love this track. It hits so hard goes absolutely bananas. Number 25 is Slippy and Micah Martin's Fatal. And the only word I have to describe the song is hype. That's it, go listen to it. Up at number 24 is Fox Stevenson's All Eyes On Me. And I realized after I put this song in this list that I have a lot more drum and bass in this whole top 50 than I expected I was going to have. I don't, I wouldn't say I love drum and bass, it's not my favorite genre by far, but I have a ton of it on this list. And this is a great example of a killer drum and bass track. Um, I love that Fox Stevenson has these very intentional pauses that he puts in the song that actually keeps the energy going because he kind of intentionally stops in the middle of the track. 
Number 23 is Tristam's Violence, and the king is back after two years with another emotional hand grenade, where you just hold it, and you love it, but you know it's going to blow up in your face. You know it's not going to be nice emotionally for some people. Um, damn, this song is so good. I love it. Getting on to this point now, I'm just, oh, I'm excited to see what Tristan's going to do in the future. And everything I know, everything he puts out, I know he puts out with almost perfection, where he doesn't want to put out anything that's even close to subpar. Number 22 is Therapy by Conroe, and I think he's been trying to find his niche for quite some time now within the EDM genre, and I think he finally found it with this track. And it is that funky, heavily distorted electric guitar just jamming out power chords throughout the whole time of the song, mixed with Conroe's really high, fun vocals. Number 21 is Cage's The Grave, and Bass House is back, baby. This track has a killer drop. And mixed in with the halfway section where it kind of slows down and goes to half pace, half tempo. It's super fun, interesting, and a unique track. Something I haven't heard from bass house music in a long time. Number 20 is Grant's Better Off Alone. And this is a cover from Alice DJ's 2000s hit of the same name. And he does such a fantastic job of blending the old school kind of mega hit project that was Better Off Alone, the original, and adding a whole new modern future based twist to it. Number 19 is Warriors by League of Legends, and this is by far the most unique track on this project. The original song Warriors by Imagine Dragons was made for the League of Legends World Championships for Season 4, and they just recently now, at the beginning of 2020, did a cover for it, a nice orchestral cinematic cover, and that thing gives me shivers every time I listen to it. It is incredible how well a gaming company can produce music. Number 18, Porter Robinson's Get Your Wish. If you know what the song is, you know why it is on this list specifically. Porter is back with his first single from his sophomore album, Nurture, which is hopefully going to come out in 2021, and he killed it. He knocked it out of the park. All the modern mix quality with his kind of old school style, just fantastic. Number 17 is Start Again by Muzz, and he kind of channels his inner pendulum with this track. This really heavy, fast really driven beat throughout the whole point, the whole song, this drum and bass track. And uh, I think this is a fantastic track, the first single off of his debut album, The Promised Land. Oh, I just love it. It has so much energy and it really is a story from start to finish. Number 16 is Dead Mouse and Kaiza, bridged by a light wave. And Dead Mouse is the king of long atmospheric tracks. And this one really is no exception. This song is the perfect blend of both beauty and grit. Number 15 is Elohim's Vacuum, and here's some more drum and bass. I did not expect this track to actually land here, but the more I thought about it and more I contemplated everything, I realized this spot, this really deserves this spot at 15, almost top 10. This track is so good. It's got some light drum and bass feels to it throughout the entire track, and it just feels like the equivalent of uh, eating nectar. Like, it feels like the listening equivalent to eating nectar. Up at number 14 is Mazer and Young Medicine's Vagrant. And I don't often love the kind of screaming, really intense music, but with Neo Soul, Fatal, and Vagrant, this one does take the top spot of those kind of three really loud in-your-face tracks that somehow just hit the right spot for me. Number 13 is Ellis's Speak Francais. If you are a Monster Cat fan, this is going to just have shocked you right now if you hear this. But hear me out. This song I laughed at for how cheesy and dumb the lyrics were and the UK kind of rap with M no ep on the top. It was just like, why does the song even exist? And the more I listened to it, the more I kind of recognized how fun Ellis was having creating this track and how fun it really is. And I'm not taking it too seriously. It's just, I love the track now. I love it. It's my 13th favorite of the year. Number 12 is Loon featuring Vancouver Sleep Clinic with Casbo. And this is my one pick for Casbo's project, and if you saw anything that I talked about in terms of my reaction or review of the making of a paracosm, you knew this was going to be up here and pretty high. This is another perfect example of songs that I love that have the kind of slow, quiet build and go into something a little bit more and then explode into this grand narrative. It doesn't need to be super loud, but just like all the musical elements combined into one sweet symphony. Number 11 is Chasing Clouds by Bad Computer and Danica Dedeo. And um, this track is something interesting for me because I never, I have always loved Bad Computer, but it's never been like a top 10, top 20 artist for me. It's always been like maybe top 40 or 50 in like of a yearly track. I liked all the songs, but there's nothing that I was like, I love. But as soon as this track came out, yes, I knew this was it. My absolute favorite Bad Computer song, without a doubt. I love the little French part that Danica Nadeo adds into it. And I mean, her vocals are always top notch. 
and hitting into the top 10. Number 10 is Bensley's All Night. Bensley was easily my biggest surprise of 2020. I had no idea what the song was before he came out with this. And when I first listened to it, I was like, this is a great song. I don't absolutely love it, but this is a great song. And I kept getting reminded of it over and over as the year went on. And I got to this list and I did my little bracket thing to figure out what I wanted to do and where it was going where. And I was like, this song deserves a top 10 spot. I love it. This is killer drum and bass that keeps energy going the entire track, keeps energy going all night. And it's got this nice distorted bass line that just vroom, ramps up the, throughout the entire song. At number nine is Honest by San Hello and Broods. And this track kind of is a carefree look at future bass. And on a surface level, it explores what it's like to be honest with a person or another, as San Hello usually does with kind of his lyrical stuff. It's kind of fun, surface level-y relational stuff. But then on a production level, it shows what top tier future bass really looks like and sounds like. Number eight, Barricade by Reaper. And I would say that on a good day, I really don't like Reaper. I don't like his style. It's too hard. It's too gritty for me. Um, but something about Barricade really hit differently. The song, just like All Night, had just energy that was contagious throughout the entire track and just made you want to go, made you want to get up and run and do something and just sprint from one way to another, drive as fast as you can. Oh, it's a ton of fun. And the kind of two, four bar uh, fake drop in the second one is just... Oh, it just gets me every time. I love it. Number seven is Steven's Delilah. This track is the most, definitely the most emotional and heart-wrenching thing on anything on this list. And it really explores the ideas of identity and kind of self-love and what it means to be comfortable in your own skin. As Steven takes the moniker of Delilah, uh, someone that he feels maybe more comfortable with. And the idea that, I don't know, you can't have always obtained everything. You always feel like you want to be someone else or maybe you're not the person you think you are. Number six, Ubi, Glacier. This track is so, so good. It is a journey from start to finish and definitely resides in this very unique niche of electronic music where it is a little more uh, funky and kind of soulful while still being a glitch hop track. It is just something that, oh, you just need to listen to and experience. There's a part in the middle of the track where it drops for the very first time that is probably one of my favorite uh, sections of music that I've listened to in maybe the last five to 10 years. Like it is so good. Number five, Phoebe Bridgers, I Know the End. This track is really something special. If I could encapsulate all that 2020 was in an individual song, it would be this one, I Know the End. This is another perfect example of the songs that have the slow build up into the big grand finale of all the musical elements together and oh, bring in the horn section for this track and the electric guitar and just like, it just all goes, it just explodes at the end into a musical symphony in your head. And I just can't say enough about this project, this song. Number four, Rushing by Eden. To think that the back end of this track, the entire almost three minute guitar solo was made in a tour bus in one take is just incredible. That he did this for fun and then just was like, that's a great section of music. I need to put that in the song. I just love Eden so much. He's probably one of my favorite artists of all time. It's either him or Daft Punk. And so I have a ton of bias here with Eden, but this track is just so good. I love Eden's vocal delivery beforehand and how it just rises up into this big thing and has this really slow, quiet denouement at the end. Number three is Gold by Coven. And whoo, Katie's vocals on this track are something else. This is another one that's more drum and bass like. It's actually just drum step. But holy crap, this song goes and there's just a ton of energy throughout the entire track. And it's all is based off of kind of Katie's vocal performance. It's crisp and clean. And the two of them work together, Katie and Max, on the production just so well. It's got so much energy to it. I love it. Number two, Gimme Love by Joji. This track, I did not like at first. I remember talking to my friends and saying like, I have nothing really feels, feels special about this one. But the more I listened to it, the more I was like, oh my gosh, this is easily Joji's best track without a doubt. I love it so much. It's got this nice raw drum and bass instrumental at the beginning and just kind of keeps going up with Joji's kind of monotone delivery. Just got that energy back and forth. It just has this like, it's slow and quiet, but it still has so much pace and drive to it. And then it builds into this kind of, 
uh, oh, I don't know. Joji just starts singing. He actually just starts going for it. And he hits this high register and it's just this big, amazing, oh, it does, it feels like a rocket going off, just like the music video is. And I just love this track. That's why it's number two. Before we get to number one, I'm just going to quickly go over some honorable mentions because there's only one artist limit. These are some of the artists that I think deserve a shout out for having multiple incredible tracks throughout the year. So a shout out to Joji's Run, great track there. Uh, Steven's I Never Stay In Love and A Hell Of A Night. Both songs are so good. Uh, Phoebe Bridger's um, Savior Complex is just another one of those singer-songwriter tracks that just killer. Uh, and I would say Eden's Good Morning is the final honorable mention that I would give. At the final spot, Bowtide Media's final best song of the year goes to Run The Jewels, Holy Kalamafuck. This song is... Oh! I love it so much. And for an, just for an EDM guy like myself, who primarily listens to EDM, to have a hype rap song as the final number one, you just know that this song is something special. Holy crap. RTJ does such a good job of adding political and social commentary throughout the whole RTJ4 project and album. And it was so timely and so perfect, but I had to go with this absolute banger, hype banger of Holy Kalamafuck to end off the year. It is just so nuts. And that beat switch in the middle is so lovely. I listen to it every time and I just crank it up in the car and oh, Killer Mike kills that last verse at the end. And I freaking love this song so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have been Bowtie Media. Let me know what you guys think of my top 50. Are there any other songs by artists on this list that you think should have made it? What are your kind of top five, top 10 songs there? I'd love to see them and hear about them in the comment section below. I will see you guys in another video.